Ah, Amsterdam. The canals, the weed, the bikes. There are a lot of bikes here. I think well, I find the drugs uh, with fietsen, but the most friendly is I don't know to say. Yeah, they're everywhere. And there's also the fiets in the gracht, meteen. Wait, what? Nou, my name is Jan de Jonge. I'm ben schipper bij Waternet. I'm ben uh, Swarov van Voort, and I'm uh, ben ook schipper. There are 165 canals in Amsterdam, totaling over 60 miles in length. And resting on the ground in these canals are bikes. Lots of bikes. The, the tel kwijt geraakt hoeveel fietsen we per dag eruit halen, maar per jaar, op jaarbasis is het ongeveer een schatting tussen de 15 en 20,000. These two guys, they're bike fishermen. They pull bikes out of canals in Amsterdam. Het schone water is het natuurlijk lekker als die fietsen eruit zijn, uh, ook, ook voor de rondvaart en uh, voor alles. Nou ja, als je het niet doet, dan uh, steken we begin met de fietsen boven het water uit. I'm just going to ask the obvious, why? Why are there so many bikes in the water? 20 percent of invalt door de wind. Ik denk dat je 80 percent door het uitgaanspubliek erin wordt geslingerd. The machine they use is basically an oversized claw machine. It goes into the water and pulls out bikes. Most bikes are found near the edges of the canals. Dus ja, hoe ver kan je hem gooien? Zo ver gaan wij ongeveer om te zoeken met de met de grijper. And what happens after they're removed? Die we eruit halen worden uiteindelijk weer gerecycled. Dus er worden weer cola blikjes of bier blikjes van gemaakt, neem ik aan. Ik denk dat wij een van de meest gefotografeerde en gefilmde mensen zijn in Amsterdam. Er is denk ik geen één stad in de wereld waar dit werkzaamheden of deze werkzaamheden plaatsvinden. Dus dit is uniek, puur alleen in Amsterdam. Every year, the world's most elite mountain bikers gather in France for a race unlike any other. It's the longest uh, downhill race in the world. That's right, Megavalanche is the longest downhill race in the world. 18 miles long, 10,000 feet high in the French Alps, and a crazy starting line of 3,000 cyclists on a mountain peak. This is Remy Absalon. He won the Megavalanche. I started mountain bike when I was uh, young. Enduro and mountain bike is really cool because we can explore uh, all around the world. Mecca Avalanche uh, Alpe d'Huez take place in the French Alps, in uh, Alpe d'Huez, so not so far of Italy and Switzerland. It's uh, really high in uh, Alps, so you have a very good uh, view, 360 degrees around you. It's really crazy. I don't know why uh, I do that. You ride all kind of terrain. First the glacier and after the rocky section, the forest. It's really physical with some uphills. So when you cross the line and you are first, you're, you're really happy and uh, you want to, to try again. The Penny Farthing was the first machine to be called a bicycle. They're old, they're funny, and for some, still a big deal. Uh, sometimes I go into a local bike shop just for a bit of a joke and ask me if I've got a tire to fit my bike and then bring them outside to have a look at it. People find the, the penny farthing almost hypnotic. I don't know why, I can't explain it, but people just love seeing it. Uh, and it's, it's just a real pleasure to share it with people. Richard, being an already avid bike racer, discovered penny farthing racing on an internet forum one night. So I entered immediately, uh, very excited, and then realised that uh, A, I don't have a penny farthing, and B, I don't know how to ride a penny farthing. But he overcame those hurdles. I'm the current UK champion, uh, so I've got a title to defend. 
But penny farthing racing isn't as easy as it looks, and it sure doesn't look easy. It's a very dangerous machine to ride. You're sat up on top on the point of balance virtually. So if anything goes wrong, you tend to be going headfirst over the front of the bike. The bikes can be up to five feet tall, and that height has its benefits. Racing one of these bikes uh, pretty high up, you get a fantastic view of the crowd. Um, it's, it's the best way to see the event here, I always tell people. Height is not the only benefit the penny farthing has. Big difference between riding a penny farthing and a normal bike uh, is uh, you can't slow down very quickly, you've got to watch the road ahead. But I find the biggest difference is the smiles on people's faces. When you ride one of these things, people just love to see it. They smile, they wave, they pull up, take photographs. I have so many conversations with people I would never ever meet without this bike and that's, that's the joy of it, people just love seeing it and talking about it. In a city that loves its bikes, there is one man looking out for the rest. One man brave enough to bring bike thieves to justice. A man the city calls Bike Batman. In reality, I'm just an engineer. Back in the early 2000s, I started really noticing, you know, there was a lot of bike theft. I remember I had a set of wheels stolen. I was livid. I was super poor and there was I mean, nothing to do. You know, I couldn't recover them. It was so frustrating for me knowing that the police are so busy with so many other crimes in Seattle that there was nobody following up on these minor incidents. Enough was enough. He realized he needed to take the law into his own hands, and he had the perfect plan. I would best describe Bike Index as a database um, that allows you to register your bicycle. It's a great way to search for stolen bikes. The way it works for me is, as I'm perusing Craigslist, I'll notice a fishy ad and I will immediately open up Bike Index and do a quick search for any bikes that have been stolen in that geographic area. The first time that I recovered a bike, I had no idea what I was doing. I drove after work to go meet this guy, and it wasn't one person I was meeting, it was three. And I told him, you know guys, the cops are on the way, I just called them. This bike is stolen and you're not going to be leaving with it. Eventually I threw the bike in my truck, burned out, returned the bike and it felt great. What began as a simple plan to help a fellow cyclist took on a life of its own. Seattle's own bike vigilante was born. We were able to recover high 30s or low 40s of bikes. I'm not entirely sure when the bike vigilante had become a thing. It was probably when the Bike Batman moniker was given to me. And this is just something, you know, I like doing. I don't need or want, you know, any recognition. Just doing good is essentially, you know, how I try to live my life. And thanks to Bike Batman, the cyclists of Emerald City can rest easy once more. I'm out there riding my bike and I have this pump on. It's almost like it's not even there. I just feel the freedom of being out there and feeling the speed and adrenaline. It's just hanging out there riding her bike. Some might say I'm like Dora the Explorer because I'm always wearing this backpack. But this backpack keeps me alive. My name is Hannah Jordan. I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm 15 years old and I'm a competitive cyclist. My long-term goals are to become pro and be in the Olympics in 2020 for Tokyo and bring back the Tour de France for women. I have an unknown rare metabolic disease. From when I was very little, I was in and out of the hospital and very sick all the time. And when I was nine, they gave me only a couple months to live. It's like I sort of skipped childhood. My mom took me all over the country to some specialists and they found a solution and they gave me a thing called a G-tube that pumps sugar into my stomach. It basically keeps my blood sugar at a normal rate. I've always wanted to do competitive stuff, but for most of my life, I couldn't play sports because of my condition. When I got on the bike, 
it was almost like my problems weren't there. It's just been like a whole new world open up to me. This one right here is really special. This was her first one. And it's a silver medal, but she'd actually only been riding a bike two months. And then shortly after that, she did this one. She did 101 miles in five hours and 18 minutes, which is very, very fast. And that's kind of when we realized that she probably was gonna be pretty good at this. This weekend, I will be competing in Tulsa Tough, a three-day race. Each day, a thousand racers compete from six different countries around the world. These women are usually 20 and above. My mom and my dad, they're my biggest supporters. They take me to all the races and help me make it in cycling. My mom, she helps me get everything ready. And my dad, at the 200 meter mark, he starts yelling. It's like a mental marker of like when I start needing to sprint. What makes me different from other cyclists is the ability to tap in that willpower and determination. I like to tell people it's sort of coded in my DNA to be a fighter. Anyone that's been in the hospital for a long time or has gone through some struggles or pain or suffering, they just know how to dig deep and tap in and to be resilient. And even if you lose some days and you win some others, you have to keep getting back up each and every single time to go out there and ride your bike. <laughs>